I was given a room at the home of a fellow recusant Catholic, and here I helped with the everyday running of the house while being able to attend Mass and remain in constant prayer. Soon, my friend and spiritual director, Father John Gerard, a brave and dedicated Jesuit priest, established a safe house for priests in London and asked if I would be willing to be its housekeeper. I eagerly accepted this great honour and entered the home to take up residence. Once there, I managed the house and the finances, cared for the rooms, cooked, swept, embroidered and mended the vestments, all the while sheltering the hunted Catholic priests that came secretly into England. I prepared a small secret room for the priests to celebrate Mass. And as I did this, I focused all of my thoughts completely upon Jesus, the High Priest. I had always suffered from a variety of small crosses in various forms of ill health. But now I began to suffer from fierce and painful headaches. The headaches came to be a continual cross to bear, but this and other ailments I saw as a great means to unite with the sufferings of Christ. Our dear Lord favoured me with spiritual encouragement, and once, while I was absorbed in his presence, after having received him in the Holy Eucharist, he showed me a vision of himself carrying his cross. After this profound image of Jesus, I desired greatly to assist Christ in his sufferings, and I yearned for the privilege of being martyred for Christ's bride, the suffering Catholic Church. After a time, it was deemed wise by Father Gerard that I move from the safe house in London, as things became very dangerous, and many people associated me with providing assistance to the hunted priests. I moved to another location where I could continue to help shelter the Catholic priests, and it was here that I formally took vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. But the journey of my life was soon drawing to a close, and I knew that in a short time, Jesus would be requiring my soul. <laughs>